Okay, hi everyone. Let's spend a moment and let's take a look at how we would estimate linear cost functions using the visual fit in the high-low method. Now, we've got some data in front of you and it's in a paired arrangement, meaning we have an independent variable um, given by the variable x, and in our case it's the number of inventory movements, and we have a dependent variable given by the variable y, which is the total materials department total cost. Now with the visual fit method, the whole idea is to plot the points and then draw the line where it best fits the points. And I'm going to use Excel to make that a little bit easier. Okay, I'm going to highlight this. I will do an insert a chart. We have a scattergram right here. I'll choose that. Good enough. It puts this chart. Let me move the chart so that you all can see it. Okay, now there's our data points right in front of us, um, and with the with the visual fit, we would draw the line of the points ourselves. So why don't I just take a sp a screen capture of that, and then we'll try to draw the line in, or perhaps I can use Excel's uh, toolbar and see if I can uh, add that. Uh, I've never done this much. Hang on one second. Let me get that ready. Okay, to draw that line, let's go to the Insert menu. And once we're at the Insert menu, we can inch, grab Shapes and grab the Line tool. And then I think we would just draw where the line would go. And the line might go like this, or it might be drawn down a bit because that one point has an effect. So perhaps the best fit looks something like this. Okay, now look at the data. We've got a point here that doesn't seem to line up with the other points. We might need to investigate whether this is considered an outlier and is non-representative of a cost function, meaning if we include it in our data we're likely to get um, an inappropriate answer because there was extenuating circumstances when this event occurred. Okay, well that da that particular data point right there uh, it occurred when we had, what, about oh, about 1,200, maybe 1,100, and the total cost is 12,000, so it's this point right here. Now, based on my evaluation of the data, with no other knowledge, I'm going to delete that point. And then what happens is I might want to use the visual fit and redraw it, and I think a visual fit of this line looks probably something closer to there. Okay, so there's our visual fit. Now let me slide up a little bit. Let me maybe lock the screen in. Um, that's fine. And I'm going to, sl actually let's pick two data points or try to estimate where we've got a data point here. Okay, I think right there we've got a da data point at about 9,000. So I'm going to put an X uh, let me do this here. We'll make this an X and this a Y. And I'm going to draw, try to fit this line using visual fit. So we'll call 1.1 and 1.2. We'll center this. And I think that one point we're going to use, and now we're trying to use like the line here. So I'm going to say that it looks like it about at about 1,000, actually we could we could draw lines to do this. So we'll grab the shape again, we'll grab a line, and we'll just draw a line going up like that. Maybe try to move that over, 1,000, and then we'll draw another line like this. All I'm trying to do is, oh, let me undo that. That's not what I wanted to do. Insert a line, uh, shape, sorry, and the line off of the shape, and draw it here. And all I'm trying to do is just show how I'm trying to estimate where that point is. Okay, so this side's a little low, but uh, you get the general idea, okay? This, this probably line needs to come up a little bit. Somewhere 
Eh, it's hard to bring it up a little bit. A little bit higher. But Excel doesn't want to draw it all that exact. But you see the point. We go up and over, and I'm going to call that about 42,000. Okay, now I'm going to take those lines off because I think they detract a little bit. So sliding down, I think we had an independent uh, variable at 1,000, and it looks like that equated to about 42,000 in costs. And I'm just estimating this with a visual fit. And then I'm going to pick another point in the line. Maybe we'll pick the 2,000 point. I'll slide up, and I think it's about right here as I see it, and that looks about $75,000. Okay. So I'll put 2000 here and $75,000. Okay, then, of course, my y function looks like takes the form of y equals, uh, I've seen it as mx plus b, uh, and I've also seen it where y equals um, uh, ax plus b. There's lots of ways to, to represent it, but the point is b is the fixed cost, m is the slope in that first one. We'll just stick with that one. Okay, so let's take the difference between these two and see if we can calculate this. Okay, so let's calculate the delta. The delta is, we'll take the two, uh, let me format this a minute. Do the same formatting. That's the formula we want to use. I'll bold that. Um, but let's move that formula out of the way for now. Okay, and the delta will be the 2,000 less the 1,000. And copy this here. You'll see we're going to do the rise over the run, right? Y2 minus Y1 is the rise, and X2 minus X1 is the run. 33,000 divided by 1,000. All right, so let's format that. Um, and I'm going to format this now in dollars with cents. And what that's telling us, for every every change in X, we have a 33 increase in material department costs. Okay, But we still need to calculate uh, the fixed cost, which is represented by the B in that formula. Um, and the way you would calculate the fixed cost is you would take that line and just run it until where you think it hits the y-axis and it looks like it hits at 10,000. Okay, you see how I'm see how I'm doing that, everyone? It crosses about 10,000. So with that, I can now take this formula. We'll put it right here, and we'll say that we think this formula is equal to y equals 33 dollars for every inventory movement plus a fixed cost of 10,000 dollars. Okay, and what that tells us is we could then use that to make predictions. If we think we had fifteen hundred dollars, I'm, I'm going to April and using that as a, a guess. If we think we would have fifteen hundred inventory movements, we would use this formula to say fifteen hundred times thirty-three dollars plus ten thousand dollars, and we would make a prediction. Oh, excuse me, it's just going to tell me I have an error, but it'll know what the error is. And its prediction then is uh, that might our total cost for a period of time where we had uh, 1,200 uh, inventory movements, or excuse me, 1,500 inventory movements is what I used in the example. There's the $1,500 there, would equate to a cost of 59,500. Okay, that's the amp. That's an example of the visual fit. Now we'll take a look at the high-low method. We'll delete this. Um, no, rather than delete it, I want to get rid of the line. I'm going to use the same data points, uh, and now we use the high-low method. Now I'm going to leave the graph out there just so that we can visually see it, but we don't need it. Let me slide it off to the side for now. Okay, we'll use the same yx plus b. All right, but what I need to know is I need to know the high point um, provided. Let me see if I can slide down one. And what I'm going to do now is I need a high point and I need a low point. Let me slide so you can see. 
and I'm going to use an Excel function. You could just look at it and find it, right? Find the highest point, find the lowest point. I'm still going to leave July off. I think it's a uh, outlier, and I think relying on July's data would have give, given us bad results. So I'm going to uh, leave it off, and then I'm going to change this one to be the, the max. I'll use Excel's max function, but you could sim simply uh, pick out the highest one. Okay, now it calculated that the highest one occurred in December with 76,543. Well, if that's the maximum, then we know this one has to use the paired independent variable that goes with it. Okay, so let's hit enter and we get 1608 there. Okay, now I'm going to slide up, give you a little bit of more room, and now we'll use the minimum of the same range, right? slide down so you can see the minimum goes in and it shows 54305 which is this one so the pair that needs to go with it is the 1219 okay now that we have that we take the rise over the run y is the rise x is the run and since I already have the formula set up it's doing it for us right and it calculates um, a per unit cost of 57 dollars and 17 cents but now to calculate the fixed cost we have to think about this differently okay let's take the total cost at the high it's 76,543 and I'm just going to work this off to the side in fact why don't I um, now right there's fine total costs at the high was the 76,543 and we believe the variable costs at that amount would be equal to the 1608 units of activity times the $57 variable cost per unit, right? So if I format that, I just want to format it with a comma for now. Um, at $91,925 and the total cost were equal to $76,000, then it would compute that the fixed cost per unit or excuse me it would compute that the fixed costs would be equal to the total costs less the variable cost or a negative fifteen thousand three eighty two so let's see if we can see now that that doesn't make sense to us because there's a negative fixed cost but that's what the high low method is is telling us to do Let's uh, let's bring the the graph back over and take a look at this. Okay, let's just bring the graph over where we can see it. Slide down a little bit. Okay, if we were using the high low method, we're emphasizing the 76 point at 1608, which is that point right there, right, and the low point is the 54,000 right there. If we were to draw a line we'll do the line and draw that high-low method our line is going to look something like that. Okay, And sure enough fixed costs cross the y-axis in negative ter territory. So I think this illustrates why uh, visual fit at times can be better than high-low, but it, I think it also points off with the high-low method you're ignoring all the other data points. You're only using the two extremes and maybe that's not the best one to use as this case it illustrates. Now hopefully you have data uh, that won't give you a nonsensical answer like fixed cost of negative 15,000, but using the high-low method uh, that can happen, as we've seen here today. Okay, so uh, I think that's a pretty good example of the high-low method. Oh, but let's change this so that we know what that actual formula would be under high-low. And it would be y would be equal to um, $57.17 minus $15,382 nonsensical given the data, but that's what high-low method would tell us to do.
Okay, thanks everyone. I hope you found this to be beneficial.